in the episode eight, we looked at this chart that we made about the promises that God made to Abraham. Now, Abraham, when God first met Abraham, or when Abraham first met God, before asking, how will I know? Those are the original promises that he made to him. And then Abraham was in the battle of the nine kings, and he met Melchizedek, the priest of the Most High God, and gave him a tenth of all the spoils from the battle. And then God made these next set of promises to Abraham. And then Abraham asked, How will I know that I will receive all these things? So he doubted. And when he doubted, then he received a dream of the smoking furnace and the 400 years of slavery in Egypt. And after that, Abraham made a son named Ishmael with his servant girl. That was Abraham trying to make the promise of God come true by his own means. And that's uh, righteousness by works, according to the Apostle Paul. After that, then God instituted circumcision and for every male child. And he also changed Abram's name to Abraham, the father of nations. And he promised the son, Isaac. So after Abraham tried to make a son, on his own, named Ishmael, God appeared to him as El Shaddai, God Almighty. And he changed his name from Abram to Abraham, that is, from father to father of nation. He named the promised son Isaac, that will be born to you in one year. And Isaac's name means laughter, because Abraham was a hundred years old when the son was promised and both Abraham and his wife at different times laughed at the thought of it and so God named him Isaac which means laughter and he was the promised son that was promised to Abraham he instituted circumcision and he also spoke of the everlasting covenant to all generations. And he also said that Ishmael will also be a great nation with 12 princes. Then Isaac was born, and when he was a young boy, God commanded Abraham to take him to a special mountain to offer his son his only son, up to God. And Abraham took him there to Mount Moriah, which is the Temple Mount. And he put him on the altar, and he was going to offer him up as a sacrifice, as he was commanded. But an angel stopped him and said, Now I know that you fear God, and that you have not withheld your only son, and then he gave him these blessings. He blessed him and he said, In blessing I will bless you, in multiplying I will multiply you, as the stars of heaven and as the sand of the sea. Your seed shall possess the gates of his enemies. In your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. We talked about how the Apostle Paul teaches us that Isaac represents Jesus Christ. As Abraham is the father of us all, and his son Isaac was offered on the mountain, so God the Father offered his son on the same mountain. That Isaac was symbolic of Jesus Christ coming and dying on the cross. And these promises given to Isaac after that event are like 
promises through Christ for Christians. Now that doesn't mean that it leaves the Jews out of it all. It doesn't. Uh, they are also God's people. We will get to that later. But this, uh, I'm just talking about what Isaac represents to Christians. So that's as far as we got in our studies in episode 8. And I, in episode 8, I skipped over chapter 24 of Genesis. And that is the chapter where Abraham sent his servant, who I think was the Hittite, he sent him to Haran, to his brother's place in Haran, to find a wife for Isaac. Now Abraham didn't want Isaac to marry a Canaanite woman. He was very adamant about that to his servant. To, he was afraid that he was going to die soon, and he was telling his servant to make sure that Isaac marries someone from his own family and not a Canaanite. So he sent his servant many miles to Haran to find a wife from his brother's family. So he uh, made the servant swear to God that he would do this. And he told him, you know, if the woman won't come with you or then you are released from your oath. So he sent the servant with ten camels and other servants to help him. Now I looked up a uh, Arabian camel can carry a load of about 600 pounds. So if we say the ten camels had maybe 500 pounds each, that's 5,000 pounds of goods. They had silver, gold, beautiful, expensive clothing, um, and a lot of gifts to bring, to give to the family for the daughter. And they would have also had a, um, a few people for protection. They would have had tents with them and provisions for themselves along with the goods and all this was on the ten camels and I don't know how many people but there would have been a few quite a few people for to take care of this caravan and they went up into Haran to the city where Abraham's brother lived and the servant he wanted to he prayed to God that his mission to find a wife for his master's son would be successful. And he stopped at a well there in that town in Haran, and he told God that when the women in the evening come to get water from the well, I will ask them for a drink of water. And the one that says... I will water your camels also, she will be the one. And before he had even finished speaking, a woman came along, mm -hmm. Rebecca, who happened to be Abraham's niece. And he asked her for a drink of water, and she gave him water, and she gave all his camels water. And so when he asked her who she is, her name is Rebecca, and she was Abraham's niece. And so he took that as a sign from God that this was the woman, and he went and met her family, and they invited him in, and he told them the whole story of how he asked God about the water and how she came and did it, and she is Abraham's niece. And they also learned all about the promises that Abraham had made, had, had gotten from God, and that he was here with all these gifts to find a wife for the promised son 
of Abraham. And they were overjoyed about all of this. And they sent her off. And when they sent her off, this shows that um, they were aware of the promises that Abraham had received. Here's the verse in Genesis chapter 24, verse 60. This is her family sending her off. And they blessed Rebekah and said to her, Thou art our sister. Be thou the mother of thousands of millions, and let the seed possess the gate of those which hate them. And Rebekah arose and her damsels, and they rode upon the camels and followed the man. And the servant took Rebekah and went his way. Then when the servant, when she agreed to marry Isaac, the servant put a nose ring on her nose, which was about a quarter ounce of gold, and he put two bracelets on her wrists, which were approximately five ounces of gold. And she became Isaac's fiancée. And when they came back towards the Sinai Desert, where Isaac was staying near Laharoi, which is the well that Ishmael's mother, Hagar, named when God came and spoke to her and she found the water to feed Ishmael. And he came along and he saw the camel train coming. And when Rebekah saw him, she asked the servant, Who is that? And the servant said, That is my master's son. And she put a veil on her face. And then Isaac took her into his mother's tent, and he loved her, and uh, he was comforted over his mother's death because of her. Now, after this, when Isaac and Rebekah were living together in the mother's tent, is when Abraham went off with his new wife, Keturah, and made six more sons, in uh, dispersed through the desert towards the land of Arabia. Now, Rebekah was barren. She couldn't have a child, and Isaac prayed for her. And after Isaac prayed for her, she ended up with twins inside of her. And the twins were always struggling. And she asked God, why are they struggling? And God told her, there are two nations inside of you. And two kinds of people. The one will be stronger than the other. And the elder will serve the younger. Now, when the twins were born, the first one came out red and covered with a cloth of hair. And he was named Izu, which means rough. And the second one came out and he had his hand on Izu's heel. And so they named him Jacob. Now, Jacob means heel catcher. Uh, or supplanter, or trickster. It comes from catching somebody's heel to trip them. It's a trickster. So, Izu turned out to be a hunter, and Jacob turned out to be a man of the plain, dwelling in tents. He was, uh, here we see again, the hunter-gatherer and the farmer. Isaac, the father, loved Izu because he loved the venison meat, the deer meat that he brought him. Rebekah loved Jacob. Now Jacob was making a red porridge out of lentils. And Izu came in from the field where he was hunting, and he was very weak and weary. And he said, Feed me with the red porridge, because I am weary. 
And that is how he got the nickname Edom. He started be, to become called Edom, which means red. And Edom, Izu was the father to the Idumean people. Or they're, they're called Idumean in secular history. And by Christian scholars, they'll be called Edomites. Edom, or Izu, is asking Jacob for some porridge because he's hungry. And Jacob says to him, sell me your birthright. Now, the birthright is the promises uh, of God to Abraham over the land and over the power and over the, the prosperity. And Izu thought, what good is the birthright if I die? So he didn't believe that God would be able to fulfill that birthright for him. Because if he actually believed it, he wouldn't be thinking he's going to die when he hadn't even had a child yet. So Jacob believed the birthright. And so Jacob was willing to bargain for it. So now looking at Genesis chapter 26, there was a famine in the land aside from the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Embelech, king of the Philistines in Gerar, the same Embelech that Abraham had dealt with. And the Lord appeared to him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee, and I will bless thee. For unto thee, and unto thy seed, I will give all these countries. And I will perform the oath which I swore unto Abraham thy father. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven. And I will give unto thy seed all these countries. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. So here God is telling Isaac that he's doing all these things, not because of anything Isaac did, but because of what Abraham did. And we will add those things to the blessings chart that what was spoken to Isaac it's all it's only the blessings i will bless you and be with you i will give you all these nations i guess the nations around sinai and i will perform the oath i swore to abraham and i will multiply you as the stars of heaven and in your seed all the nations shall be blessed so that is not the slavery and the 400 years it's only the blessings. So this is very significant. This is uh, Isaac represents the son, where Abraham represents the father who gave his only begotten son. So to the son goes only the blessings, not the 400 years of slavery and all that. Now that still happens but it's not spoken here to him. And Isaac dwelt in Gerar, and the men of the place asked him of his wife. And he said, She is my sister, for he feared to say she is my wife, lest, said he, the men of the place should kill me for Rebekah, because she was fair to look upon. So he's doing the exact same thing his father did with the wife. God told him not to go to Egypt, so now he's only doing it to Ambalek again. Ambalek married his mother and father, Abraham and Sarah, and he's telling him, she's my sister. And it came to pass, when he had been there a long time, that Ambalek, king of the Philistines, looked out at a window and saw, and behold, Isaac was sporting with Rebekah, his wife. 
They were doing something that only a man and a wife would do. Kissing, hugging, who knows, play fighting. Um, and Ambalek called Isaac and said, Behold, of a surety, she is thy wife. Now, they probably suspected it all along. And how said thou, she is my sister? And Isaac said to him, Because I said, Lest I die for her. And Ambalek said, What is this you have done to us? One of the people might lightly have lain with thy wife, and thou should have brought guiltiness upon us. And Ambalek charged all his people, saying, He that touches this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. Then Isaac sowed in that land, and received in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. And the man waxed great, and went forward, and grew until he became very great. And he had possession of flocks, herds, and a great store of servants, and the Philistines envied him. And all the wells which his father's servants had digged in the days of Abraham his father, the Philistines had stopped them and filled them with earth. And Ambilek said unto Isaac, Go from us, for thou art much mightier than we. And Isaac departed, and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerar, and dwelt there. So a valley outside of Gerar. And Isaac digged again the wells of water, which they had digged in the days of Abraham his father. For the Philistines had stopped them after the de death of Abraham, and he called their names after the names by which his father had called them. And Isaac's servants digged in the valley, and found there a well of springing water. And the herdmen of Gerar did strive with Isaac's herdmen, saying, The water is ours. And he called the name of the well Essek, because they strove with him. Essek means strife. And they digged another well, and strove for that also. And he called the name of it Sitta which means opposition. And he removed from there and dug another well, and for that they strove not. And he called the name of it Rehoboth, which means streets. And he said, For now the Lord has made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. So he found a place where he can live in peace. And he went up from there to Beersheba, and the Lord appeared to him in the same night and said, So now that he's dug all the wells of Abraham back up, because God told him, I will bless you with the blessings of Abraham. So he went back to Gerar, and he's following in the footsteps of his father. So maybe that's why he said, She is my sister. He just wanted to do, he was following in his father's footsteps. And then he dug all the wells because he's trying to do what Abraham did. And then God appeared to him in the night and said, I am the God of Abraham, thy father. Fear not, for I am with thee, and I will bless thee and multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. And he builded an altar there, and called upon the name of the Lord, and pitched his tent there, and there Isaac's servants digged the well. Then Ambalek went to him from Gerar, along with Azuzah, one of his friends, and Pekol, the chief captain of his army. And Isaac said to them, Why do you come to me, seeing you hate me, and have sent me away? And they said, we saw certainly that the Lord was with thee. And we said, Let there now be an oath between us, and let us make a covenant with you, a, an agreement. And you will do us no harm, and we have not touched you. And as we have done to you nothing but good, and have sent you away in peace, you are now the blessed of the Lord. So they wanted to make an agreement with him of peace because they sent him away, but he is now blessed by God. He made them a feast and they ate and drank 
And when they rose up in the morning and swore one to another, and Isaac sent them away, and the, they departed from him in peace. And it came to pass the same day that Isaac's servants came and told him concerning the well which they dug. And he said to him, We have found water. And he called it Sheba, which means an oath. And then he named the city, the streets around the well, Beersheba, which means the well of an oath. And it's also, Sheba is also seven. I remember Abraham gave Ambalek seven lambs for the well. And now Isaac just made an oath of peace with Ambalek at the well. And he called it Sheba, seven. Therefore, the name of the city is Beersheba unto this day. And Ezu was forty years old, and he took a wife, Judith, the daughter of Beri the Hittite, and Beshema, the daughter of Elon the Hittite, which were a grief of mind unto Isaac and Rebekah. So Ezu took two Hittite wives, and they were a grief to Isaac and Rebecca, probably because there was a tradition in their family not to make um, babies with the people in this land. Remember, Hittites were Canaanite, cursed Canaanites. And it came to pass, when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim, so he could not see, and he called Izu his eldest son, and said to him, My son, uh, go get me a deer, and cook it for me, and then I will bless you. So Isaac was ready to pass down the birthright blessings from Abraham down to his son, Izu, who he loved because he loved his deer meat. Rebekah heard Isaac say these things, and Izu went to the field to hunt and bring it. And then Rebekah told Jacob what Isaac had sent Izu to do. And she said, Now go o obey my voice, and go to the flock, and fetch me two good kids of the goats, and I will make them meat for your father, such as he loves. And you shall bring it to your father, that he may eat, and that he may bless you before his death. And Jacob said to Rebekah his mother, Izu, my brother, is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. My father will feel me, and I will be seen to him as a deceiver, and I shall bring a curse upon me, and not a blessing. And his mother said, Upon me be thy curse, my son. And only obey my voice, and go fetch me them. And he went, and he fetched, and he brought them to his mother. And his mother made the meat as his father loved. He was blind and old. He probably couldn't tell the difference between goat and venison anyway, right? And Rebekah took the goodly clothes of her oldest son, Izu, which were with her in the house, and put them on Jacob, her younger son. And she put the skins of the goats on his hands and, and upon his neck. And she gave the meat and the bread which she had prepared into the hand of her son Jacob. And he came to his father and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, who are you, my son? And Jacob said, I am Izu, your firstborn. I have done according as you sent me, and now eat, that your soul may bless me. And Isaac said to Jacob, Come near, I pray, that I may feel you. And then Jacob went, and he felt his hands and his neck, and uh, he thought he was Izu. And he said, Are you my son, my son Izu? And he said, I am. And he said, Bring it to me, and I will eat of my son's venison, that my soul may bless thee. And then Isaac said to him, Come near now, 
and kiss me, my son. And he came near, and he kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his clothes, and he blessed him. And he said, See, the smell of my son, as the smell of a field which the Lord has blessed. Therefore God give thee of the dew of heaven, and the fatness of the earth, and the plenty of corn and wine. Let the people serve thee, and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over your brothers, and let your mother's sons bow down to you. Cursed is everyone that cursed you, and blessed is everyone that blesses you. And it came to pass, as soon as Isaac had finished blessing Jacob, and Jacob had gone out, Ezu came in, and he also had the meat. And he said, Arise, father, and eat the meat I have brought you, that you may bless me. And Isaac said to him, Who are you? And he said, I am your son, thy firstborn, Ezu. And Isaac trembled exceedingly, and said, Who? Where is he that has taken venison and brought it to me, that I have eaten of all before you came, and have blessed him? Yea, and he shall be blessed. And when Ezu heard the words of his father, he cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry, and said to his father, Bless me, even me also, my father. And he said, Your brother came with deception, and has taken away your blessing. And he said, Is he not rightly named Jacob? For he has supplanted me these two times. He took my birthright, and now he has taken my blessing. And he said, Has you not reserved a blessing for me? And Isaac answered and said to Ezu, Behold, I have made him your lord, and all his brothers I have given to him for servants. And with corn and wine I have sustained him. And what shall I do now to you, my son? And Ezu said to his father, Have you but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me, O my father. And Ezu lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac answered and said to him, Behold, your dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven from above. And by your sword you will live, and you shall serve your brother. And it shall come to pass that when you have the dominion, you will break his yoke from off your neck. And Ezu hated Jacob because of the blessing his father blessed him. And Ezu said in his heart, The days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then I will slay my brother Jacob. So he's saying, My father is going to die soon, and then I'm going to slay my brother. These words of Ezu, her elder son, were told to Rebekah, and she sent and called Jacob, her younger son, and said to him, Behold, your brother comforts himself with a purpose to kill you. Now, my son, obey my voice and rise and flee to Laban, my brother, in Haran, and stay with him a few days until your brother's fury is turned away. And then I will send for you, and why should I be deprived of both of you in one day? And Rebekah said to Isaac, I am weary of my life because of the daughters of Heth, the Hittite wives of Izu. If Jacob takes a wife of the daughters of Heth, such as these, which are, which are of the daughters of the land, what good shall my life do to me? And Isaac called Jacob, and blessed him, and charged him, and said to him, You shall not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. So Isaac agreed with her, and it also agreed with Abraham. Arise, go to Padan Aram, which means Aram across the river, which is in Upper Mesopotamia, to the house of Bethuel, thy mother's father, and take a wife from, ye, from the daughters of Laban, your mother's brother. And God Almighty bless you. Now here's the El Shaddai again. God Almighty bless you and make you fruitful and multiply you that you may be a multitude of people and give you the blessing of Abraham and to your seed with you that you may inherit the land where you are a stranger which God gave to Abraham 
and Isaac sent away Jacob. So Jacob left and went to, to, towards Haran. And when Izu saw that Isaac blessed Jacob and sent him away to take a wife from there, and said to him, You shall not take one of the daughters of Canaan. And he also saw that Jacob obeyed his mother and father, and was gone to Haran. And Izu saw that the daughters of Canaan did not please his father. So then Izu went to Ishmael and took a wife of Mahalath, the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son, the sister of Medjadoth. So, so Izu then went and took a wife of one of the daughters of Ishmael, Abraham's son. And that would have been Isaac's cousin. So Izu is playing the game of bringing Ishmael into it. So that's the end of the story of Isaac. Uh, Jacob goes to Haran for about 15 years. And when he gets back, then Isaac dies. So there's not much more to, in here about Isaac. Okay, now that we've gone over Isaac's life, let's take a look at the chart altogether. In episode 8, I made a blessings chart. Following along with the blessings that Abraham received from God, the promises God, that God made to him, and, and now we have continued it with Isaac. So this chart here shows both Abraham and Isaac. The left side is all Abraham, and the right side is Isaac. But the very top at right, Mount Moriah, that is Abraham and Isaac. It's when Abraham offered up Isaac, his only son. But he didn't have to offer him up. It was symbolic, and he received those promises for doing that. Um, God tested him, or proved him. The next one under that is when God appeared to Isaac after the death of Abraham. When Isaac was going on his way to begin his journey, God appeared to him and told him not to go into Egypt. Now Abraham went into Egypt, and Abraham met up with the Pharaoh in Egypt and lied to him, or didn't really lie, but he told him his wife is his sister. And the Pharaoh took his wife, and because of it he got plagues from God, and he kicked Abraham out of Egypt for that. And then Abraham did the exact same thing with the Philistine king, Abimelech. And Abimelech ends up marrying Abraham and Sarah, his wife, and after that is when she finally is no longer barren and gives birth to Isaac. And when God appears to Isaac and says, Go not into Egypt, Isaac ended up still following in Abraham's footsteps, but without going to Egypt. It's like he corrected that part somehow. And I guess the slavery in Egypt is somehow linked maybe to Abraham going there. But there's this, this something about Egypt that I don't really understand at this point. But God told him not to go to Egypt, so he didn't go. And then he went on to redig re the wells that Abraham had dug. But the Philistines had filled them in. And Isaac redug them. And he reaffirmed the oath at the well at Beersheba with Abimelech. And he also did the same thing that Abraham did to Abimelech. With the wife is my sister. But Abimelech was too smart for him. And Abimelech was watching him and found out that it was his wife. So... The next one down was when Isaac blessed Jacob and Izu. To Jacob he gave the blessings, and to Izu he also gave a blessing. But if we remember what Izu said when he found out 
that Isaac had gone in ahead of him with the goat meat instead of the deer meat? Then Izu said, First he has taken my birthright, and now he has taken my blessing. So he took his birthright back in the, when they were young and with the red lentil soup, and now he has taken his blessing. So there is two things now that we have to identify. What is the birthright and what is the blessing? What is the difference? And it's pretty much laid out right here. When Isaac blesses Jacob, that is the blessing. And when Isaac sent Jacob off to Haran to find a wife from his mother's family, Isaac gave Jacob the birthright. He passed him the birthright. So the birthright is El Shaddai, linked to El Shaddai, and a multitude of nations, and the blessings of Abraham, which is the being righteous by faith, um, numerous as the stars, uh, God is your shield, the great reward, and all these things. Now, so it's important for us now to recognize the birthright and the blessing because that will get a little bit more important in our next few videos. So I will see you in the next video which will be about Jacob.